food. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for attending today's webcast, Revit Server and Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC Data Management for Architects and Engineers. Today's presenter is Matt Lane, Director of Consulting Services with Hagerman & Company. We also have Chris Weatherford, a Solutions Engineer with Hagerman & Company, on the line to help answer any questions that you have. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind you that you are in a listen-only mode. However, if you have questions, you can ask them by typing them in the questions panel, and Chris will be addressing those throughout today's webcast. Also, at the conclusion of the webcast, when you close your GoToMeeting client, you'll be prompted to complete a survey. We ask that you take just a few moments to do so, and if you're a member of AIA and would like to receive credit for today's webcast, question six asks for your AIA number. Just go ahead and type that in, and we'll submit that before the end of the week. Matt, whenever you're ready, you can begin. All right. Thank you, Berdina. Uh, yeah, as Berdina mentioned, uh, it's myself and Chris Weatherford here on the presentation. I'll be doing uh, the presenting. Um, Chris is available online to assist with answering questions like Berdina mentioned. I'm actually out of our data management group, uh, which specializes in implementing and supporting Vault and other data management products here at Hagerman & Company. And Chris is out of our AEC group, uh, so he's familiar with all that software. So hopefully we've um, got all the ends covered here as far as technical information and answering questions and that kind of thing, both on the data management and the Autodesk AEC software side of things and how everything works together. So uh, this presentation, we should be wrapped up uh, within the hour here. Um, just a little bit on the time logistics. Uh, everyone should be seeing my screen. And notice uh, the title here um, does talk about Revit Server and Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC. I'm not sure how many people out there are familiar with Revit Server. Uh, we thought it was important to go ahead and add a little bit of information on that product to the presentation as well due to the level of integration uh, that is there between Revit Server and Vault, um, and we get into the presentation that it does show those working together. So we thought it was important to get some understanding on that product as well during this presentation. Uh, so the first little part here uh, discusses Revit Server, and then we'll dig into the meat of the presentation on Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC. <coughs> yeah, Revit Server is a tool available with uh, the later versions of Revit software that is designed to allow multi-site project sharing of Revit projects across multiple company locations. And you can kind of see that on the graphic there on the upper right where you got the central server. Uh, we've got offices in New York and Shanghai. And then each site has a local server uh, that's synchronizing back to the central Revit server. We know uh, with so many AEC firms uh, have multiple office locations and need to work on projects jointly across those locations. It's difficult to do and share those Revit projects just with the base Revit software. So Autodesk came out with Revit server uh, to aid in that. And uh, those of you who use Revit, are probably familiar with, of course, you know, sharing over a local area network, which is really a very simple process. You know, you've got your uh, local area network there, central model on the server, and then all your local users, meaning you know, on their, their local PC on the LAN, are you know, very easily able to access that. Uh, but then as you go to a wide area network, you know, spread across the country or maybe even across the globe, that gets much more difficult to do due to the size of the Revit models and keeping everybody in sync. And that can involve a lot of you know, compressing, linking, remote computing, those kinds of things. Uh, where Revit Server, which as you can see here, was introduced in the uh, 2011 Subscription Advantage Pack. It's set up, and it's kind of an expansion on the graphic that you saw before. Um, at your company's main office or 
just some central office. You've got your central Revit server and model communicating with local site cache servers. And then the key is then all of your user interaction is done with the local server. So it's fast. And then the, all the servers will synchronize with each other to keep all of your project team up to date. And the process uh, of how that works is you know, updates from all the local site servers will come into the central server, which will then distribute them out to your local cache servers where they're accessed by the local users. And then as they make changes, that's all pushed back up to the central server as part of the replication process. So that, in a nutshell, is a quick overview of the Revit server tool, which is available by itself, independent of Vault, and really just for, is just for managing Revit files. Then as we move into the Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC, it can work with or without Revit server, and Vault Collaboration AEC is not just for Revit files, but for any type of project file that you might have. Uh, so that's uh, hopefully uh, you can see how those projects or those products uh, are differentiated and how they can uh, work with each with work work with one another. Uh, digging into more details on the Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC product. <coughs> The Vault Collaboration AEC came out, uh, I believe, with the 2013 product releases, which, you know, of course, would have been in the spring of 2012. The Autodesk Vault product line has been out for a number of years. Uh, really, kind of came out of their mechanical group. Uh, over the years, then additional levels of the product have been developed, and then with 2013, they came out with the specific. AEC product, uh, which there's a uh, there's a standard Autodesk Vault Collaboration product, and then there's an Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC flavor for the product, and I'll uh, I'll talk about what uh, what makes that uh, specific to the AEC environment. Uh, but with the uh, Vault Collaboration AEC, allows you to access Vault for your check in and check out um, for most or all of the. Autodesk AEC products like Civil 3D, Navisworks, Revit, um, also Buzzsaw integrations. We'll talk about uh, other AutoCAD-based products. Now, the Vault Collaboration AEC, you know, at its heart, it's a document management product, um, and most document management products, whether they're CAD focused or just for general document management, have kind of a base underlying feature set with them. And Vault Collaboration AEC has all that, plus all the special integrations and enhancements for CAD and specifically with the Autodesk AEC CAD products. Um, Vault gives you, gives you a secure document vault, uh, so it gives you very you know, robust, enhanced security above and beyond what you can with Windows Explorer to make sure only the right people can make changes, only the right people can delete, only the right people can see files, and they can only do those things when a file is in the correct status to allow them to do that. Uh, of course, it has check in, check out, or, or if I go in and check out a file, that file is marked as checked out to me. Other people can see that I've got it checked out. They can view the file, but they can't be making any conflicting changes to it. Uh, Vault allows automatic document revisioning. Uh, so when you release a new version of a file, it can increment uh, the revision letter or number. Or with AEC, your revisions could be based on project milestones and label those milestones. And then you can maintain a revision history. So you can go back to past revisions of project documents as well. And you know, we talked about the CAD integration. Uh, Vault also integrates with Microsoft Office, Microsoft Outlook, which is a 
you know, very nice thing for uh, tracking project information because you know you're getting uh, emails coming in all the time from clients or other consulting firms. Those can be logged right into Vault. And again, Vault manages all types of files, um, searching, viewing and redlining, document workflow, web capabilities. We'll I'm talk about these in more detail. But these are kind of a standard list of bullets inherent to a lot of document management systems. And then you'll see with Vault Collaboration, the above and beyond level of integration that um, provides with the Autodesk CAD products. Uh, these are some of the top 10 features and reasons to implement Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC. And we'll just expound on those um, some here. You can see more of an, an expanded list of the products that Vault integrates with. Uh, which means you can do your check-in and check-out and those kinds of things directly inside these products. Uh, so it makes it easy to learn and adapt to. And that's one of the key differentiators. We're seeing there's other document management products out there, and there's a lot of them that will work with vanilla AutoCAD. But, you know, of course, as most people are finding out, the days of vanilla AutoCAD are kind of going away with and being replaced with the AutoCAD based verticals and then other things like Revit and Navisworks and so on and uh, the Vault products are the best if not the only product that really integrates with some of these Autodesk software tools. Uh, you'll see more when we get into the demonstrations uh, from ease of use standpoint. Vault is designed to work and look like Microsoft Outlook so it's simple, easy to use, and then it does allow you to access the Vault functions from within your CAD and Office applications. From an implementation standpoint, uh, actually our company has been implementing document management software for 18 years now. Uh, long before Vault ever came out, and we've worked with a variety of different software products and tools, Vault is definitely the easiest product we've ever worked with as far as installing it, administering it on an ongoing basis, and then getting it up and implemented. Now we always recommend that companies contract our services to provide assistance, but in a lot of cases that can just be as few as a couple of days or maybe in most cases, five days or less, unless you get into a lot of multi-site stuff. Uh, so it's easy and quick to get up and rolling on using the software. <coughs> Another key thing with Vault Collaboration is that the licenses float. And there's no price differential between locked or network licenses with the Vault products. They just automatically are network or floating licenses. So you could buy 10 licenses and let it float uh, between 20 users or, or more, you know, or whatever you have within your firm. You know, security is a big thing with Vault. Of course, with Windows, you've got security. But you know, Windows security on files is typically broken down to full access, read only, or none. Where with Vault, your file access can be controlled very granularly. Uh, you can see over there on the right um, roles, where with Vault, you assign different users to different roles within the software. And there's a number of different roles. And then based on the role you're in, you get a list of access rights. So you can see it's much longer and much more granular. So you can give people the rights to change files, but they might not have the right to delete them, uh, which you can't do in Windows. Um, so you don't end up with any unauthorized deleting or lost project files and that kind of thing. That's just one example, but there's a whole host of others. Uh, also, it does support Windows-type security, 
so you might put me into the editor role, but maybe on this project, I'm not working on it, so you don't want me changing files. So for that project, you could dial me back just to view only access. Uh, also, Vault supports, uh, you could call it document workflow, or you could call it file states. And you know, files could change from you know, under change to in review to release. And your access to a file can change. For instance, when a file goes to in review, even if I'm an editor, I can't edit files that are in review because you know other people are coming in and looking at it uh, to review and approve it, and you don't want changes happening in the middle of that process. Uh, so you can see with the product, it definitely gives you a level of control that's lacking uh, with just trying to manage files with Windows. You know, other big thing of going with going with Vault is that it really centralizes your project data. Um, with Vault, you know, there's your central server, and then as you're doing check in and check out, behind the scenes, it's actually bringing local copies of the files to your local computer, so you're getting fast access while you're working on a project, opening, closing, saving, and so on. And then when you check in, then it automatically behind the scenes updates the server. So it you don't have to do any manual file moving and get you know multiple copies of files uh, that are people accessing for editing. So you're always going to the vault to point out a file to edit, but it may be bringing it up behind the scenes off of your local drive so that it's fast and then seamlessly behind the scenes it's synchronizing all that. So it really gives you the best of both worlds in terms of central access and fast access. Um, also, I'll talk about uh, centralizing standard content as well. Uh, we talked about the revision history on files. You can see here on the upper right, uh, they're tracking files by revision letter or number. Uh, down here at the lower, using more of an AEC type revisioning scheme, uh, where the revisions are labeled uh, by their uh, milestone or project status, like you know, conceptual, 30% approval, and so on. So you can revert back if necessary to previous submittals. Uh, you can go back and uh, view older revisions at previous milestones uh, within the project, and you, know, you always know which file relates to which project milestone. So it eliminates all of that confusion. Uh, standardized content. Uh, not only can you manage your project files in Vault, you can use Vault to access your standard content. So if you're in AutoCAD or Revit, go to access some standard content. That can come from the Vault server as well, uh, so that it's controlled, centralized, and then everybody on the project, in the office, or across multiple offices is working off of that same content. Uh, there's also some automation of repetitive tasks, like uh, you can do batch printing and plotting, batch publishing of um, DWF files for viewing, and so on. And then uh, scalability. Again, this goes even further on the centralization. We talked about Revit Server, which does automatic replication and synchronization of files and data with Revit across multiple offices. With Vault, either alone or in conjunction with Revit Server, it can do multi-site replication and synchronize all of your files across multiple sites. So again, everybody's kept on the same page in a project, but everybody's got fast local access. So you can assemble a project team uh, to work on a project you know, across multiple offices in the US or across multiple offices around the world. Also, the multi-site replication can be used to replicate and synchronize your standard content across multiple offices, so everybody is you know, working off that same content, and they're able to access it quickly because it's 
off of a local server. Um, and you can see here the automatic replication. A lot of people would set up daily, so all the, the changes are synchronized at a certain time every day, or you can do it every so many minutes or hours, or if I go to access a file off my server, it'll know that there's a newer copy already on another server, and it'll ask me if I want to grab the latest copy. So you're, people are always prevented from accessing an outdated version of a project file. Uh, also, you can do selective replication. So if your firm has a central office, all the files for all the projects can be there. But then at your satellite offices, they would only be getting copies of the files for their projects and not copies of the files for projects that they're not involved in. We've, uh, we've implemented the replication with Vault out of large number of companies. Uh, we've done national and global implementations and it's been a very effective tool and to me it's got probably the highest return on investment and value of anything in Vault collaboration uh, just the way it can uh, you know, enable you to efficiently manage and execute projects across multiple company offices. A couple of other options available with Vault Collaboration AEC, and there's one more that I'm going to add here at the end and mention. Um, what the biggest differentiator between uh, standard Vault Collaboration and Vault Collaboration AEC is the uh, buzzsaw licenses that come with Vault Collaboration AEC. With each license of Vault that you have, this under subscription, you get a Buzzsaw subscription as well, which I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with that or not, but that Buzzsaw is Autodesk's hosted project collaboration tool for the AEC market, where if you're needing to do outside the firewall file sharing between your firm and, and other firms on a project, or with contractors at the job site, or with the client, uh, you can post files to Buzzsaw, and it, uh, you know, it's like FTP on steroids, uh, with all kinds of tracking and notifications and viewing, and just a whole host of features for AEC project collaboration. Uh, with a Vault Collaboration AEC, you get license to Buzzsaw, and then also the tool to allow automated synchronization between Vault and Buzzsaw. And we'll, we'll see a demonstration of that here later on, um, but you can set it so that when a new file is released in Vault, it'll automatically publish it to Buzzsaw, so people outside your firm will have access to it, and then they will get email notifications, and you can also set up that synchronization to go the other way. Uh, if you have uh, some other engineering firm doing work, if they post it to Buzzsaw, it can then bring it back down into your Vault. And then, of course, Vault is not just available on a PC. It's also a mobile app as well uh, for viewing. Uh, also, Vault Collaboration comes with Microsoft SharePoint integration. And again, we'll see a demonstration of that where Microsoft SharePoint, I don't know how many of you are using it, but it is kind of a Microsoft platform product for basic file sharing and collaboration. A lot of companies are going to it. Autodesk includes what they call a SharePoint web part, which would allow somebody in SharePoint to do a search, and that search can actually hit the vault, and then if they view a click a file in the search results to view, it'll actually view it inside the vault. So it seamlessly ties together the SharePoint vault and the Autodesk vault. So from an end user standpoint, um, it's what they call federated searching. So they just run their search and they don't need to know whether the file's in SharePoint or in vault. 
it'll retrieve it for them for viewing, and then they can uh, see both CAD and non-CAD data that way. Also, Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC comes with its own web-based search view print client that is actually free. So if you have other people in your company who just need, they're not changing, they just need viewing, they can use that free client in an unlimited manner to do search, view, and print on CAD files. I should also mention the viewing with Vault, one of its features when you check a CAD file into Vault, it automatically renders it to DWF, you know, which is about only is like 90% smaller than the CAD file. And then your viewers will automatically be routed to the DWF file for viewing so they can do it on a lightweight computer with a free a lightweight computer over a slow bandwidth connection without any additional viewing software other than the free Autodesk Design Review. Let me go ahead and pull up uh, the Vault software just to take kind of an introductory look at it. Um, we go in here, you can see as we talked about, this is the Vault user interface. I actually have Vault Professional on this computer. Um, all the levels of Vault have the same look and feel. And like I mentioned, there are different levels of Vault. And where Vault is a little bit different than other Autodesk software is, you know, with CAD software, you might pick, okay, this user needs this level of CAD software. This user needs this other different level of CAD software. Vault is a client server application, so you actually pick the level of Vault that's correct for your company. So everybody in your company would either be on standard Vault, or they'd all be on Vault Collaboration, or they'd all be on Vault Professional, whether rather than different users having different levels of the software. Uh, files in Vault, uh, you can arrange them into folders. Uh, so you can mimic your very same folder structure that you have in Windows inside of Vault so people can be familiar with that, uh, not go into anything strange. So you can you know, open, close, browse. Um, I can search and retrieve files. Uh, with Vault, any AutoCAD title block attributes, they're in automatically indexed into the Vault database. Uh, properties of Revit files or models, Microsoft Office properties, those are all indexed into Vault, so you can automatically search and retrieve files by any of those properties. Also, Vault supports content indexing and searching. So if you have spec documents in Word, all of their content is indexed into Vault, and you can search and retrieve you know, those documents by any of their text, uh, textual content as well. Uh, then your file listing, you know, if I click on a folder in Vault, I get my files listed, again, which is similar to Windows Explorer, except there's a lot more information there at your fingertips. Uh, you can see information on the file, whether it's locked, uh, if it's checked out, it'll have a check mark by it, say who it's checked out. You can see the state of the file. Uh, these views are all customizable as far as what properties you want to show here. Uh, so any document properties, and again, information out of your title block can be displayed in these columns. And then right-click on a file, again, like Windows Explorer, and you get your options available. You know, open it, view it. You know, here's where you can do your check-in, check-out, um, change the file state, and so on. Over here, down below, we can see more detailed information on each file. Um, if I go, this is actually a 3D file, but if I go to this particular file, you can see it's on revision B, in case we're using a, you know, a straight ANSI revisioning scheme as opposed to a uh, project milestone labeling revision scheme. Uh, so you can see multiple revisions on a file and go back and view old revisions if you need to. Uh, also tracks um, 
where used. So if you've got XREFs in there, I click where used. I can see all the higher level drawings that that particular XREF is used on. And then uh, we've got our previewing. This is the DWF view of the file, which the DWF is automatically published whenever the CAD file is checked in. So again, if I'm on a low-powered computer, I, I've still got full three-dimensional or two-dimensional viewing capabilities, and it's going to be loading those files very quickly over a LAN or a WAN because the DWF files are so small. Again, that's automatically published. Uh, so people don't have to manually do that publishing to keep keep things in sync. So that's a quick overview of the Vault interface. Um, at this point, what I'd like to do is show some demonstrations of Vault uh, working inside of and in conjunction with uh, some of the AEC applications, uh, specifically with Revit. So we've got a demonstration we want to go through on that that we'll uh, flip over to at this point. In Revit, we're going to start off by opening up a project from the Revit server. If you haven't seen Revit server yet, you're looking at it now. We're using uh, Revit structure. The integration with Vault works the same with uh, MEP and architecture. And as I select this file from the Revit server, I'm creating a local copy, just as we did with the uh, shared workspace. The Vault integration is a first-class integration with the toolbar, providing all the tools that we need. So here you can see, um, again, this being Revit, um, in all of your applications, whether Revit or AutoCAD based or Microsoft Office or Microsoft Outlook, you'll have a Vault toolbar, and that will vary depending upon the application. Um, probably shown less here with Revit, uh, but others, you know, log in, log out, uh, so you can access files directly from within whatever application you're working with. We're going to start off taking a look at the family. Loading a family from Vault, we've got all this great content management capability. Let's use it. So we'll start off by looking for some columns. There's the one I want, the concrete column. I select OK. What if I would rather browse? We can look at the All Content folder, which is everything in my environment. Uh, we could also hide that folder so the typical user can't access it and force the users to go through the projects. I'm working on this Trapello project now. Let's uh, look at the content that is available exclusively to that project. So I grab the uh, square column that I want and insert it into the model. When I'm done with my edits, I'll just show you where this is here. There it is. Inserted the column. Once I've completed my edits, I perform a synchronize with the Revit server. Did you notice what? happened that we just synchronized with the Revit server, but we also added a file to Vault. This automatically happens for the user. There's no extra effort, no extra work. We just covered the predominant use case for the Revit user. We're going to take a look at Vault for a few minutes here, and I'm going to show you some of the methods by which we can interact with projects and with content. We're going to start off with the content. I can investigate. I didn't show this before. When I was in Vault, or I was uh, you know, going to a folder, and I'd get a list of files, you can also display the list of, a textual list of files. In Vault, you can also uh, display a thumbnail listing of files uh, if it's easier for you to find what you're looking for from a graphical standpoint. The content through Vault, by looking at the history, or even previewing 3 d with of the model as well. See the current state, see what features have been developed. I can see the uh, file and vault properties as well. Switching to the details view, we can interrogate and mask the uh, state, look for the particular revisions or states that I'm interested in. If I wanted to 
add some of these, this content to a specific project, I can select and drag these over to a project folder. Underneath the Trapello project, I have a content folder specifically set aside for that and create a link. This means that files are not duplicated. I have one master that's available in multiple places. I can link this master file into as many different projects as necessary. Yeah, that is another feature he didn't uh, really talk about too much. With Vault, you can, if you need the same Hi, this is Matt. I got disconnected there for some reason. I apologize for that. Uh, this came up on my phone and said that the call had ended. Uh, so hopefully everyone is back here with me. And technology at work, or I guess not at work in that case. Um, so let's go ahead and continue on with the demonstration here. The files are now linked. Looking at the projects for a moment, say I want to find out the current status of the Trapello project. I haven't, uh, haven't been working with this one recently, so I want to get an update. So I run a report that's associated to the project folder. These reports can be configured off of any of the metadata that is available uh, using a tool, the Microsoft Reporting Engine. This particular sample simply shows it dashboard of the uh, categories, but uh, more practical examples might be hours logged against the project or progress, the status. So I'm looking for a particular file in this project, and as you can see, there are several folders uh, cut up in categories here for the different disciplines, and I'm not sure where the file is that I'm looking for, but I think it has something to do with the site, so I just do a search, and it comes back with a few different files. Um, let me see what I've got here. I've got a civil, some uh, scheduling information, and the AEC. That might be the one I'm looking for. So let's go to that. Go to the folder that contains that file, and uh, let's take a look at what the related files are. Uh, what's associated with this? Uh, the design intent. Maybe that is the one I'm looking for. As you can see, Vault manages the relationships between the files, and these relationships are tracked automatically as the files are added to the Vault. Let's jump over to the structure project, or structure folder of this project. Take a look at the file, and we'll see that uh, there are 31 iterations of this file right now. This is the file that we've been working with in Revit. I'm going to jump back over to Revit for a moment. And I showed you how we automatically added a file to Vault earlier with the synchronization. If we choose to turn that off underneath the options, I can say, you know, I'd rather not have it automatically synchronized. Whatever your current workflow requires, you could then 
Yeah, that's with Vault and Revit Server, there's two different options. Uh, with the synchronization on, every time you check into Vault, or it, excuse me, with the synchronization on, every time you save a new Revit file and you're using Revit Server, it creates a new version in Vault. To me, that's probably not the predominant use case. Um, people would use Revit Server to synchronize the files between sites, you know, on an ongoing, timely manner, and then probably manually check in Revit project files to Vault at project milestones. Uh, to me, that's probably a more realistic and better way of setting up and managing your Vault and Revit server integration. And choose the point, in, the point in time in which you want to add a file to Vault. The add file command takes the file that I have open right now, creates a new iteration in Vault. There it is. File 32. Now I want to explain a little bit more here about why we're doing this automatically in the background. The Revit server manages the Revit files and the changes and the concurrent updates that are happening between the users. I would refer to the workflow, the interaction with Vault concerning the Revit project as more of a contributory workflow. The Revit server manages the changes, manages the ownership of the elements, and at certain points when you choose, or if you choose to have it automatically do a synchronize, a copy of the file is then added to Vault. So there is no checkout from Vault for the Revit project files as is normal for all other file types. Because the Revit server manages the change, Vault acts as a record of history for the project files. Okay. So far, we've been working with the Revit server project. I want to show you how we work with a work shared project, which is identical. But I'm going to use this as an example to show how projects are imported to Vault. As you can see, there are no work shared projects currently in Vault. And I'm going to jump out to the R drive, a network drive, where I have a research lab project set up. And I've got a couple of different file formats available in here. And as you may notice, you've got a uh, backup folder for the research lab and a temp folder. That tells me that this RVT is a central file. It is work shared. I also have a folder with some sub-documents available. We're going to import this entire project using the add folder command in Revit. When I select the folder, the unnecessary files are automatically excluded. And you may have noticed in the options area that we can configure and choose which files we wish to exclude. During the import, I can deselect individual files that I'm not, that I would not care to uh, vault. So I'm going to put this in the uh, WS Projects folder, which, by the way, it figured out automatically. The folder was imported into Vault, and all of the files along with it. And our 3 d Dwift was automatically created for us. That's the import of a project. And it's the same workflow for a work shared project or for a Revit server project. Select the folder, import it, and the files are added to Vault and can then be managed from that point forward with Vault. Now how do we bring in content? I'm going to use, we could use the add folder command. I'm going to use the add folders to show how this differs and grab a few files that I have sitting out here. When I go to bring them in, it automatically knows where to put them. This brings us to the end of the demonstration where we've shown the integration between the Autodesk Vault and Autodesk Revit, showing how content can be managed, how the files interact with both the Revit server as well as Vault server, and the options that are available for this. Hopefully that gives everyone uh, kind of a quick overview idea of how the, the software operates and functions. Um, before we get into the, the Q&A wrap-up, uh, from a collaboration standpoint, 
uh, which is so important and critical in the AEC environment. I do want to go to a couple of very short, these may only be like a minute or two in length, uh, showing how Vault integrates uh, with Autodesk Buzzsaw and Microsoft SharePoint on a, uh, from a collaboration standpoint. And then uh, from there, we'll just get into uh, Q&A and wrap up. An engineering firm is leaving the design work for a large infrastructure project. The project team includes internal engineers located in several different offices and consultants from different companies. The firm is using Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC for internal data management across the enterprise and Autodesk Buzzsaw for securely exchanging project files with external partners and stakeholders. For this project, the BIM manager sets up a project sync between Vault and Buzzsaw so that project information can be automatically exchanged with external partners. Kevin, the civil engineer, using Civil 3D, saves his file to the Vault. Because Buzzsaw synchronization occurs on predefined events, the file is automatically replicated to the Buzzsaw site. Charles, the surveyor, gets an automatic notification that there's a new file on Buzzsaw. He edits the drawing by adding the correct definition to the surface using Civil 3D. He then saves the new version to Buzzsaw. And the file is then replicated back to the vault where it can be approved by the project manager. With Autodesk Collaboration and Data Management Solutions, AEC project teams can coordinate enterprise behind the firewall data management with secure and simple cloud-based file exchange to optimize data management, collaboration, and anywhere access across internal and external project teams. Yes, again, that's one of, I think, one of the key themes of Vault in that it enables collaboration on projects. You know, if it's just multiple users in the same office, keeping them in sync. If you, if it's users within the same firm, across multiple company offices, with the replication that's built into Vault, or if you're needing to collaborate with people in other firms along with your internal people, then the Buzzsaw integration allows for that. And then finally, uh, just a quick look at the Microsoft SharePoint integration. Let's take a look at the integration between Autodesk Vault Collaboration AEC and Microsoft SharePoint 2010. We'll start with a brief look around Vault, the foundation of Autodesk's solution for collaboration and data management. You may notice that it now has a new project-centric UI, as well as an integration with Autodesk Civil 3D, Autodesk Revit, Autodesk Buzzsaw, and Autodesk Navisworks software. Now let's take a look at SharePoint, part of Microsoft's enterprise infrastructure for business collaboration and content management. Basically, with SharePoint, users that are not familiar with Vault can still find and access, design, or other files from Vault right from within SharePoint. We'll be working with the Millennium Project. It's an upscale grocery store. The construction phase has just started. Since the design has been approved, all changes need to be reviewed and recorded. A collision was discovered between the east-facing windows and a structural beam. Using SharePoint, we'll get the visualization file from Vault. At this point, the user may not even know that they are accessing a Vault file. Using Autodesk Design Review, we'll create a markup detailing the issue. We can easily share the markup for review and approval using a SharePoint workflow. As an example, we'll create a change request, linking the actual drawing file from Vault and attaching the markup file. Upon submission of the change request, a task is automatically assigned to the program manager. When the program manager reviews the task, she'll verify that the necessary details are included 
add her comments, and assign the request to the appropriate person. In this case, the architect. The architect reviews the task and the associated red line. He quickly understands the issue and uses Autodesk Revit to modify the design. After the sheet set and project are up to date, they are added to Vault. Last, he sets the SharePoint task approved and an email is automatically sent to the creator of the request. After receiving the email, the user runs a search in SharePoint. The federated result contains the workflow and markup from SharePoint and the affected Vault file. Selecting the Vault link displays the Vault data form. The user can also browse through the history of the change request, viewing the approval history and comments. The linked Vault file is also available here. Viewing the visualization file, we can see the modified design. All right, well that uh, concludes the presentation portion of what we have now. At this point, we can wrap up with any questions that we have, uh, you may have. Uh, Chris may have been answering some of these as we go along. Let me pull up the question panel and see what um, questions we have. And feel free to submit additional questions during the, uh, uh, as we're answering other questions here as we go. I had a question on the Buzzsaw Sync. Uh, control of it. Yeah, that can be controlled either way. So if you only want from Vault to Buzzsaw, you can do that and not have stuff coming from Buzzsaw back into Vault. Um, publishing directly to a, uh, a... Are there plans to publish to PDF? I don't know of uh, specific enhancement plans in the product to enable PDF publishing as opposed to the standard DWF publishing. We've had other uh, requests for that. Um, there's a new version coming out in the spring. Uh, I don't know if we'll see it then. There are some third-party tools that can be set up and configured to do the PDF publishing, but I don't know of anything specific now or in the future on that. And um, yeah, I was I was actually trying to look that up, uh, Matt, and I didn't find anything either. Um, you know, traditionally the DWF is is Autodesk's you know default um, you know export version. It's it's their version of the PDF. Um, I do do realize that there's uh, a lot of places that don't accept um, DWFs just yet. Um, they still deal with the PDF world. So as as far as I've been able to see, the um, you know PDF creation would need to be handled. Um, within the actual Revit product. Um, Michael, you had also asked if there was um, a way to interface the API. I'm sure there is, and I'm sure there's people that are, that are trying to figure that out now. Um, it's just not yes. a feature within the existing product. Yeah, with Vault, there is an API, which is, uh, for others, that's application programming interface where you could use you know, VB or .NET or C programming uh, to do autom automation and customization. Um, Vault also has what they call a job server uh, for doing automated tasks, which, you know, that could just be script-based or in conjunction with the API. I'd have to check, but I think uh, a combination of the API and or job server would help automate that publishing. We'd have to research that one a little bit further. Other questions here? Anyone would like to submit? Uh, if you do think of questions later, don't hesitate to, uh, I guess, contact your local Hegerman representative, and they can get it uh, to the appropriate people to begin answer. If you think of a question later, uh, we'll go ahead and hang on here for another minute or so to see if we have other questions coming in.
Okay, going once, <laughs> going twice. Ah, uh, okay, here we go. We'll vault operate in a virtual environment. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of people are going to what they call virtual servers in their IT department. Um, easier to manage, um, more function out of less hardware, uh, and we've got a lot of users uh, set up to use Vault in a virtual environment. It, that's becoming very, very standard. So yeah, that, that's a, a definite yes there. All right, well, if there's not any additional questions, I uh, really appreciate everyone joining us here. Uh, again, if you do need additional follow-up, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and if that's it, we'll, I guess we'll wrap up here uh, just in time for lunch in the central time zone anyway. <laughs> so uh, thanks again, everyone, and uh, have a good afternoon. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Matt.